Hi everyone, it's currently 10.39 p.m. on a Thursday. Do you think I can paint a battle wagon and go to bed at a reasonable time? Me neither, but we're still gonna try. Chess clock. All right, we're doing this again. It's set to two and a half hours and I know about this time and we're deliberately keeping it that way so that I can go to bed at an okay time. This in focus, not really. I already did a video where I uh, paint a bunch of golf boys in a short period of time. It went okay. We got a lot of stuff done, but this time, we have more of a plan and we're gonna try and do it again. I think two and a half hours is an okay amount of time to plan out and get this to a reasonable standard. Good things about the battle wagon, it's really big and only has like one kind of surface area and uh, color it wants to be for the most part. Bad things is it's really big and only has one color and surface area it wants to be for the most part. It'll be easy to paint and the challenge will be making it not look bad. Uh, the other challenge will be fixing it because I think it dropped at some point while in transit. Uh, I think there's a single big Big shooter missing that's probably in the back of my car now that I look around. That's okay, we'll find and fix that later. And uh, the bottom's magnetized now, so it's gonna be okay to transport. And uh, once it's painted, maybe I'll actually try it and not have it break. Uh, so I'm gonna spend a couple minutes fixing this. I've been listening to a lot of Kanye West recently. I find his issues of mental health inspiring. <laughs> Something very really little cool about an insanely driven person who's clearly struggling and uh, a lot wealthier than you. I've been on a speed painting kick. That last video felt like really good to get done. I forgot how much I love painting a lot of dudes really fast. Okay, 10.47 p.m. Two and a half hour chest clock. We're starting. Right now. First step, make sure your brush is working. We cheated, we did that already. Uh, second step, I'm gonna prime everything black using Vallejo surface primer, as always. It's my favorite airbrush primer. It's the only airbrush primer I own. See you soon. All right, we're currently fully primed and uh, a half hour in, which is a, a atrocious start. This is, this is cursed. This is a, a really, really bad, but we're gonna keep going anyways. So what happened is in the last video, I fucked up my airbrush at the end. And uh, in this one, it did not take the necessary time to clean it after the previous video. We spent the first 20 minutes of this video cleaning the airbrush from the last video. And then do you know how long the priming took after it was cleaned and ready to go? Like 10 seconds, but uh, or I guess 10 minutes. It was, yeah, it mathematically couldn't have taken 10 seconds. It was like 10 minutes. It was very fast. I'll say this every time it breaks, it's still worth it at the end of the day. I'm so glad I have an airbrush. It wouldn't be possible to do most of the stuff I do without one. Uh, that stated, I'm very mad at it, and it's currently sitting in the ultrasonic cleaner and timeout. We're gonna hand paint this next part. I'm gonna go into dry brushing next. Just like the last goth video, I'm gonna start with a bronze color, and then go over with a, a metal after. Gonna keep it really light. I want this battle wagon to be clearly distinctly black, so it's going in with our Vallejo bronze. One thing that, uh, I don't even know if this really does that much, but someone told it to me, and now it's been stuck in my head. Uh, dry brushing, if you wanna keep it light, just do it like one direction, so that the top thing you're dry brushing gets picked out, um, almost like, you're like you're like brushing it so there's like a slight it's not a xenophil highlight but it's just coming from like one direction you know and then for the areas i want to be metal like this front roller i'm just going all out like basically anywhere except for the wheels and the little like metal bits up top like right here that i'm painting right now but yeah we want those like pretty close to black still all right that's done looks all right going in next with iron warrior just going to repeat the same process leaving some of our bronze underneath showing through but uh covering quite a bit of it too for big vehicles like this one thing i like to do is create like little texture like right here is like a silver you can see that looks chipped and then the brush texture is just doing that naturally all right that looks good how long did that take we went from prime to this in less than four minutes and that included a lot of time of me uh explaining stuff and thinking a little bit about what i want to do recording definitely slows me down a little bit but it's worth it because otherwise it's just me talking to myself about battle wagons at the end of the day uh i'm gonna go in with a bronze next so felt like vallejo Leo bronze, brassy color is cool, but I think, yeah, I'm gonna use this one. This is a uh, hash nut copper, just a little more saturated. And I'm taking some care to distinguish the different parts here, but I mean, this brush is a lot bigger than the areas we're painting, so there's some spillover. 
And I think as long as you keep it subtle, it looks good when it spills over. The messiness really lends itself to the weathering well. Yeah, picking out the wheels, picking out any metal detail areas that I want to stand out. Again, like these pipes. I'll probably grab a couple of these little armor plates too, though I want a lot of those to be white and red as well. I guess, yeah, I'll do. Yeah, there's some of these top ones too. It's even in frame and all. I gotta look at my fucking camera more. If it gets too bright for you, you can always add like a black wash after. So here's where we're at. I think it looks pretty good, but there's some areas that I think are a little too bright, like this top. Um, so I'm just gonna take a darker black than we used to prime it actually, just this like fully held black. And I'm gonna dry brush that on top. It's like this brass, just very carefully. It should make it look like almost burnt. So earlier when I was talking about how it's uh, great and also sucks a lot that this whole thing is like gonna be mostly one color and one texture. This is why if you just like go and make the whole thing uniform, it'll, yeah, it'll be fast to paint, but it'll definitely just look like it's one uniform thing that's not painted super well. Uh, one way to help break this up while still going fast is just to create your own texture with the brush. That's what I did with the streaks earlier, trying to make like scratches. Now I'm doing the same thing, but with like black on top to create like multiple layers. You can really see it in like this roller, or I can see it. I don't know if, I hope the camera can see it too. Like right here, that rust texture has a couple layers to it. Once we had like weathering powder, and some washes, it'll be even more prominent. We're about 45, uh, 48 minutes in, and here's where we're at. The airbrush is cleaned. Um, this guy is looking fine. And uh, I'm gonna go in with some Def World Force to prime the boy on top. Just a little base coat, carefully applied with the airbrush. That's uh, way too much paint. We're gonna waste quite a bit of that, or it's fine. Yeah, that's what you want. You want a lot of bubbles coming out of your airbrush. That's how you know you did a good job, that there's bubbles coming out. Another good sign you did a good job is if it doesn't work. Yeah, he's solid, Deaf World Force. I added in some ogre and camo, and I'm gonna mix in a tiny bit of Katie and Flesh Town too. I'm gonna go on for the second layer of highlights. Or first layer. Second layer of paint, first layer of highlights. There we go. Uh, yeah, I've started doing the Katie and Flesh Tone thing regularly pretty recently. I'm starting light. I'm gonna go in with the second highlight after this of more Katie and Flesh Tone, but I think, yeah, just having like a uh, variety in skin tone besides just green, like a little bit of warp in there, um, helps these guys a lot. Because the orc is like really the only thing right now, at least, that's like not just like a dark colored battle wagon. Um, as long as he looks good, like literally once he's done, I think the battle wagon will look like air quotes fully painted. It won't look good, but um, it'll look like a completed model, you know? Completed in the very low tournament painter sense of completed, where it's just like, yeah, that's like legally playable and you don't lose points for painting. Which is not my favorite Santa in the world, but uh, it is the world I live in. Can't deny what I am at the end of the day. You, uh, you, you hobby painters don't know the darkness within. All right, that's good. A little late, but uh, I'm gonna make it darker with washes. The next step might feel like it's going to be one of the fastest. I think it, it seems always deceptively easy to most people who don't work with them regularly, but I wanna add some decals next. And I fully anticipate this to be one of the most time consuming uh, parts of the rest of the video. They add a lot. Again, like we said earlier, this thing's pretty uniform. Having little patches of color, but are easier to apply than hand painting them, but like are still gonna take a, a pretty long amount of time to get in there and think about placement and decide which ones we want. Uh, and then also, I mean, just cutting them and then like uh, varnishing them is a whole nother thing. Uh, Microsole, if you haven't worked with decals much, I really, really recommend this stuff. You put it on top before you varnish. It's a, oops, yeah, again, for sure getting a copyright strike for this song. Um, yeah, microsole, you cut out your decal, you put it on there, you put your microsole after, then once that's on, it takes like a couple seconds to dry. Then you take matte varnish and then that'll make it blend and look a lot more natural. The reason why we're doing this now is because the step after that is gonna be weathering. And I want the decals to be just as weathered as the battle wagon itself. Otherwise, I think it would look weird. It feels like they're slapped on after. They feel more like stickers. And this way, they, uh, they're gonna blend in and it's gonna feel a lot nicer. Okay, uh, we have one minute and nine seconds left, and uh, I used the entirety of the rest of the time to apply decals, and now it just looks like my battle wagon is a bunch of face tattoos. Was this worth it? 
No, not for this challenge, but this isn't about this challenge. This is about having a uh, fully painted battle wagon that I don't hate. And I think this sets us up in a better position to um, apply weathering and make it look like... I think it'll look better as an end result because we've done this. Uh, I like having all the decals. Um, I used to be really picky about decals and prefer hand painted stuff because it feels like too clean for orcs to have like drawn this on here and it didn't feel like, you know, like realistic, but uh, I don't care anymore. I like that this one uh, has a poorly translated text at the top that says ride to the Valhalla. I like that there's a pentagram back here. Uh, I like this guy that looks like the offspring logo of a little bullet in his mouth. They just they just feel good. If I was trying to stick to the challenge, um, which I'm now, uh, this is me telling you I'm breaking the challenge. If I was trying to stick to the challenge, I probably only would have put like one, two, and then maybe like one on the back. But because, uh, yeah, this is a thing that uh, I'm gonna still have after this video is done. Um, spend a lot more time putting more decals on. Uh, it's currently like 1.14. My new arbitrary bedtime is 2 a.m. So I'm gonna set this for another 40 minutes and see how far we can get going into weathering. Uh, I'm gonna start with this Vallejo light rust wash. It's basically an enamel paint, but it's an acrylic, uh, which is better because it doesn't make me uh, want to vomit when I smell it. And you could just use plain old water to, uh, to water it down. Um, you don't have to use odorless paint thinner, which is uh, not actually odorless and not actually good for you. The GW washes are like fine for this, but I think you do need something like a little more powerful than that. I'm not gonna apply it everywhere. I just wanna start off at least by putting it like in the crevices. And then I'm gonna paint some streaks eventually too, like over the decals and anywhere that it looks like, like if this was a real thing, where would grime fall due to gravity? Here, I'll just do it on the skull real quick. Uh, you want your brush to be very sharp here so that it leaves a nice tip. Uh, the tip makes it feel more realistic. And uh, yeah, I think the sharpness just, just helps. You could also, if you wanted, um, take a brush that has like a lot of like weird shapes built into it. I don't really know if I have one right now. Like the corner of this brush is a good example. Like you can see this area. I wouldn't use this brush because it's too thick, but imagine this but smaller, and then like the whole thing looks like this. Textures like that can be really useful for making little streaks. Uh, a lot of this is not covered in rust because I want to use multiple different colors and do them in layers. And just like our brass and the silver on top. Um, you really don't want to do it too heavy up top, otherwise uh, it'll be too much and cover the black. So uh, I'm doing a little bit layered of there. Um, I haven't really used this stuff yet. Uh, Dirty Down Rust Water Soluble Paint. I don't know what it's, it's just called Rust, I guess, by Dirty Down. Everyone raves about this and I'm stoked to experiment with it more. I did like a small test and liked it, but uh, felt like I didn't really get enough time to play with it yet. So. Uh, we're gonna start doing that now. This feels like a really good model to experiment with. All right, I'm pretty happy with the light rust wash. It's gonna take a while, I think, to see how it really looks. Not light rust wash, what is this stuff called? Uh, just plain old rust, uh, dirty down rust. Damn, I think it's probably time for bed too. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep going for a little bit, but I can feel myself getting tired. Yeah, uh, it's still glossy right now. I know it dries pretty matte, um, and there's a lot of layering going on in here, and I think it's gonna change colors it dries too, so. I'm excited to see how the layering turns out and I'll probably add more after, but next up we're gonna uh, add some streaking effects. And for this part, I am gonna use enamels. Just like most things in life that are toxic and bad for you, uh, people use it for a reason. Uh, it smells very bad and uh, I, I really don't like handling it, but it's the best. People do things that aren't uh, necessarily good for them for a reason. And I think I wanna mostly focus on like this area down here, uh, on the rest of the buggies in my work army. There's a lot of like weathering on the tires and uh, stuff to make it look dusty and I'm gonna do the same here. Um, I'm mixing a little bit of this stuff, which is oil paint. It's by uh, the Elephant brand. I don't know how to pronounce them still. They look German. The Elephant brand. Oh no, Spain. That makes sense. Uh, A-B-T-E-I-L-U-N-G. And I'm mixing that with a little bit of the Africa dust from AK and some odorless enamel and it's making this little brown orange. So this is why enamels are so good. I can just take like a drop like this 
and then I'll like, oh no, <laughs> that wasn't enough thinner. Hold up, take two. It's like outlining. It's just like, it's really good at the forming to the contours of whatever surface you're painting. So like if you take an enamel or an oil and mix it with some thinner, it'll just like really effortlessly and naturally like, like trace something. So I just want this to fill like certain cracks and outline certain parts of the model. Sorry if you can hear Discord notifications in the background. I hate, I hate it when I'm like watching a video and I can like, hear shit going on uh that's like a phone notification or whatever yeah i'll do it on this skull as you can hopefully see i'm just putting little drops on next up the thinner and it's like straight up tracing that skull filling only like the far edges and then leaving the main area flat which looks really nice we're at uh two hours and 13 minutes roughly and i'm gonna call this guy fine for tonight we're calling him fine for tonight i'm happy with the weathering so far this uh rust stuff there's a lot of rust stuff. This specific rust stuff is uh, still taking a bit to dry. So yeah, this will change and I'm gonna leave it overnight and see how it looks. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with it for just over three hours. Like this is complete model. Um, I'm gonna put a lot more time into it and add, I mean, even go like, like if I varnish this, I would like be happy to play a game with it. And I mean, I'm just stoked that I have this battle wagon painted. It's just been like sitting there for a while and it probably took about as much time to assemble, if not more, as it did uh, for me to paint it, which is always a nice feeling too. The golf army is getting there. I'm gonna touch it up tomorrow and I'll take some nicer, uh, <laughs> oh no, there's oil paint still in the bottom. I got some, it's fine, whatever, there works. It's rusty, it looks good. Yeah, I'm gonna touch it up tomorrow and, and I'll take a final like presentation video. Hi everyone, it's uh, way further past the following day. Uh, it's in fact about a week later. And it's not because it took a week to paint this. Uh, I spent maybe another two hours on this max, but sometimes you forget to finish filming a video every day for a week straight and uh, you end up here. Uh, nothing crazy different at it. It's just a lot more of the same. I used some more of the rust wash on these areas and the decals. The African dust, I put a second layer of that on top of all the wheels. Freehanded some hazard stripes here on the battle wagon and on the other side as well, down there. I added a little bit of red wash on top of these panels and a red dry brush after just to have more than one color and make them pop out from the rest of the uniform black. This guy got a lot more detailing. He probably took probably half of the remaining time that I spent painting this. I freehanded those checkers on top of his head. The binocular lens is painted now. There's some more layers of wash and highlight onto the skin. And I picked out all the little detail areas like his buckles and the metal on his uh, overalls. Here's the top of the battle wagon. There's some more metallic streaks right here in front. Uh, I blended in some of the enamels with more odorless thinner. This area has had a bit of work done to it, but sort of the same trajectory we started previously. Just uh, spending more time on the details and adding some more layers of dry brushing. And here's what the back looks like. I might just paint two more of these for fun. Uh, I really enjoyed painting this battle wagon. So I guess, yeah, it's about five hours total in paint time, which I think is pretty good for a model this size that's like potentially a big centerpiece of your army. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, I have a Patreon if you want to support me. That's the best way to do so. And uh, if you don't have money, just a, a, a like, subscribe, and comment goes a long way. And if not, that's fine. I don't really leave comments on videos that often, so I can't blame you. But I hope you like this and got something out of it. It, and thank you for coming by.